is wrong, I'll make you right before all your battles I will fight. years ago when I used to say like the Lord changed my message and she would say no he didn't <laughs> she said you just didn't listen the first time <laughs> never forgot that I, I use it on my preachers all the time you just didn't listen the first time <laughs> and it's so true because as I was preaching this last Sunday I, I knew I wasn't finished with it but look at look at St. John the fourth chapter look at verses 1 10. And then we're going to do read verses 27 through 29, just those last three verses. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go yes. through Samaria. Yes, My yes, God. Yes, yes. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. Yes, he did. And it was about the sixth hour. And there comes a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Verse 10, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knew the gift of God and who it is that says to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living 
water. Look at verse 27. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yes. Yet no man said, what seek thou? Or why talk thou with her? Listen to this verse. The woman then left her water pot and went away into the city and said unto the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Back to verse 28. The woman then left her water pot. I want to speak to you this morning before we pray from the thought you have to drop something to get something. Yes. Look at somebody say you have to drop something to get something. No, no, say it again. You have to drop something to get something. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for your presence already. We thank you for the songs that have ushered us to this moment of worship. Now, God, you gathered in here today those that you wanted here. Somebody needs to drop something off today. Yes, Lord. I pray that you will speak through these lips of clay. Allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. Lord, you're my strength and my redeemer. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. You have to drop something to get something. A few weeks ago, I was I was preaching and was preaching from the 27th Psalm. And during that time, I remember telling the people that they are too blessed to faint. Uh -huh. That you've come too far to give up now. That in spite of all that's going on, you're just too blessed to give up and to faint now. And I talked about what kept David from fainting and giving up on his God was he had a strong belief that God would allow him to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Uh, David had to be released from what I call some emotional baggage. And I declare to you that there are a lot of folks sitting in church pews uh, that have emotional baggage. Uh, we don't like to admit it because we like to come across like everything's fine with us. That, that, that really everybody else has a problem, not, not, not us. Matter of fact, sometimes as preachers, we, we hide behind the sacred desk sometimes. We, we hide behind turnaround collars. We hide around behind robes and nice preaching outfits. And, and got all Haiti, yeah, I'll say it that way, got all Haiti going on uh, in other places. Amen. Uh, David had to be released from some emotional baggage. David had several traumatic experiences in his life, which, which lets us know that none of us will go through life without experiencing something. Whether you want to be, believe it or not, every one of us in here right now is just a moment away from a tragedy. I know you don't want to talk about it. I, I, I know you want to act like trouble never finds you and, and you're just so saved that, that it just never finds your house. But you just keep on living as the old folks say. Trouble will find every one of us. Amen. Uh, your dishwasher will break down. It's, it's not that sanctified. Uh, your washer and dryer will stop washing and drying. It's not that same. Amen. There's, all of us will go through something in this life. As a matter of fact, Elijah was so distraught to the point that he said, Lord, it's enough. Take my, he wanted God to kill him. Amen. Which, which means that all of us go through some things in our lives. He, uh, he, he had become so emotional to, to the degree that he became suicidal. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes we can have an experience in our lives where it feels so overwhelming that all kinds of thoughts enter our minds. Mm -hmm. Whether we want to admit it or not, all of us still got to fight the thought process. Oh, Lord, I thought I had a good church here today. All, all of us have to fight 
the thought process. All of us are still tussling with some stuff. Amen. I was in a in our men's conference yesterday, and the and the brother told our men said 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 we gotta move from boys to men. Said that uh, men. Now I'm not gonna go on everything because it, it, it was men only in this session. But he said that that they got so much going on up here, such a thin line where that these kind of things come into our minds, and we gotta fight these things off. All of us get them. All of us get a get a little flicker every now and then of where we used to be. Not you. Maybe, maybe I, I know you. You've been saved 40 years. Ain't never thought about doing nothing else but serving God. That, that's not true. That's not. You felt like knocking somebody out who got on your nerves. And that wasn't of God. Oh, uh, see, see, I got a hand clap on that one. <laughs> that's the truth. There is an all out plot against you as a believer. I'm going to say there is an all out plot. As a matter of fact, the plot is designed to get you early. Hear me, young folk, especially, to, to get you early in life. Matter of fact, it was designed to get you while in your mother's womb. It's designed to destroy you emotionally, mentally, and physically. Amen. Jesus told Peter on one occasion, he said, Simon, look here, Simon, Simon, listen, Satan desires you. Matter of fact, he desires you that he might sift you as we, he says, but I pray for you that your faith fail not. In other words, the plot against you has been exposed. Oh, you want to be glad about that. The, the plot against you because the plot was to get you early. As a matter of fact, he didn't get you early, so he's still trying now. Every now and then, some of his plot comes up. And then God sends his word and begins to send a healing process. Now, if you ever read the fourth chapter of John's gospel, it's, it's, it's interesting because uh, there is so much in this scripture. Time won't allow me to really do it justice. But, but, but if you ever read this fourth chapter of John's gospel, you will find yourself in this story. Oh, yes. We like to say it's, a, it's about a woman, about a woman that, that you know, uh, um, uh, you know, she, 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 she came. But I want to tell you something. Uh, I see brothers all over this scripture. I see men folk all in the scripture. I, 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 see, I see girls, I see boys, I see children. All that he said now, it speaks about a woman but it's not just for women. Now, some people use it for Women's Day uh -huh. and women's conferences, but it's not just for women. It depicts every person that has ever had an issue. Yes. Well, yes. Now, how many of us in here will admit that you, that you have had some issues? <laughs> See, that ought to be both hands, a foot. Uh, will admit that we're dealing with some issues right now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. So this particular scripture, it depicts every person that has ever had an, an issue. And I submit to you, there are some things, or there are some of us sitting here right now that have some issues. And, and, and if we be honest, some of us have some issues with God. Yes. Yes. Don't be scared. It's right. He's not going to strike you. He's not going to strike you. <laughs> that, that's just being honest. Sometimes, if we really admit it, sometimes we sit down and sometimes in our psyche, we ask God, God, why? Uh -huh. that's right. That's right. Why? Come on, come on. Don't let me hang out here by myself. Why am I going through this? We'll almost make it sound like we're the only ones that are going through this. God, why am I going through this? The story here is about frustration. John, John 4, it's about frustration. It is about depression. It's about oppression. It's about separation. It even has a tinge of racism in there. It's about men. It's about women. This story has no respect of persons. Everybody can see themselves in this story. And I realize, I, I realize that this story has a strong contrast to the preceding chapter concerning Nicodemus. As a matter of fact, both of them had an encounter with Jesus. And just for a moment, listen to the strong contrast between the two of them. First of all, uh, for Nicodemus, the place was Jerusalem. For the woman, it was Samaria. The time 
was for, for Nicodemus by night. By night. Uh -huh. For the woman, it was about noon time. Right. The occasion for, for Nicodemus was it was a planned visit. Right. But for the woman, it was just by chance. Uh -huh. The content for Nicodemus was it was uh, more or less uh, theological. But for the woman, it was practical. The initiator in Nicodemus' case was Nick himself. But on the woman's side, it was Jesus. The social status of Nicodemus was he was highly respected. The woman was an outcast. Uh, the, the sex was male and the sex was female. But the attitude for Nicodemus was he was polite. But the woman at first... She was a sister girl. At first, she was hostile. <laughs> and the results, there is no record of what happened with Nicodemus. But for the woman, she was converted. And she, and she came to, to the place where she received Christ. Now, now there was a need for, for Nicodemus, for Jesus, to go through Samaria. There, there was a shorter route, according to history. There was a shorter route he could have taken. Yes, As a matter of fact, history says that because there was such bad blood uh -huh. between the Jews and the Samaritans, right, right. the Jews used to go out of their way uh -huh. to avoid any contact with them other folk. Uh -huh. But Jesus said, I need, I need, God help me here today, I need to go through oh, Samaria. I, if I can be personal, Jesus said, I need to come through Antioch yes, yes. on this second Sunday. And I need to go through there because I'm going to have some people there that have some issues. And I come to tell you, he's going to deal with your issues in this service today. If you're willing to drop something off, you can pick something up. Give the Lord a praise right there. Well, I found something else out. And... I don't mean to take so long, but you got to hear the history of this whole thing. There was an area in Samaria that was called Sychar. Now, it doesn't mean much to, to, to anybody. It's, it's, it's almost like uh, the city of Harrisburg, but in the city of Harrisburg, there is a little small community that has another name, but yet it's still the city of, it's, it's almost like Trevos. Where that everybody has heard of Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, but Trevo sits in the middle of Ben Salem. Yes. But we have a different mailbox number. As a matter of fact, we, we went to vote on last week, and there's two parts to Trevo's. Some folks did, did, didn't know it. it. It really is. And there were two separate lines for the voters. My granddaughter says, says uh, me, mom. Why are people voting in two separate places? Don't we all live in the same area? And my wife was trying to explain the purpose, and I'm, I'm not going into it right now, but there's a, how they have a split. And Sychar sat. You had to go literally through Sychar, I'm sorry, through Samaria to get to Sychar. But when you study the name Sychar, Sychar means the place of pretense. It's the place of phonyism. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And a whole lot of folk lived in fakehood USA. They came to church. They drove or they took cabs or they got buses or they got rides. They came to church, but when they returned, they went back to psycho.
of each other. Generational issues. Demons that have been assigned to areas. Now you may not like this, but there are demons that are assigned to disrupt churches. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach. I ain't scared of you today. Demons that are assigned to disrupt churches. Demons assigned to disrupt households. All of that was in psycho. Somebody shot psycho. Sometimes we wonder why we act certain ways. How come I can, I can, you can come greet me down front and I'm just as nice. Mm. Praise the Lord. <laughs> God is good. Shata. Scooby Doo. And then meet you at the back pew. Uh. And it's like, it's just your neck. Like, hey. And you don't know yourself. Hear me real good now. You don't know yourself sometimes why you act the way you act. Uh oh. I tell folk when I do premarital counseling, listen, you better do a background check. That's right. <laughs> Before you say I do, you better check them out. Check out the family background. See, y'all ain't saying much now. Yeah, you right. See if there's any problem in the in the genes. Because what you see? Yeah. <laughs> oh, bless his name. And some of y'all sitting here right now, y'all got to look straight ahead because you got married into some of that stuff. Y'all yeah. ain't going to say, my eyes scared. I'm going to preach to the wall today. Lord. If I had only listened, Lord have mercy. He was so sweet on dates. Lord, she was so lovely on dates. But God, after the honeymoon, when I was ah! <laughs> I know I'm doing it with some laughter, but I'm trying to tell you something. So you need to check some stuff out. If you, I used to tell women, if he's hitting the wall now with his fist, yeah. it's going to be your face later on. Yeah. Ooh, preach, white. That's the truth. Psycho. Generational demons. Demons are signed to disrupt and oppress areas. Demons who are assigned to keep folk in bondage. Jesus said, I got to go there. Whether you want to accept it or not, I believe there are territorial demons yes, that's the truth. That's assigned the truth. to disrupt yes, families. Yes, yes, oh, bless his yes, name. Yes. Assigned to disrupt churches. That's why churches need to understand their purpose and why they're in a particular neighborhood. Yes. That's why you just can't jump up and say, I'm going to put a church over here. You need to be very prayerful as to why is God leading me to put it there. That's right. That's right. And then you need to find out if, if, if it's not happening, if it's not working, maybe we missed God. Ah, come on now. Let me tell you this. Before we sat down and built that $1.7 million church uh, up at Trevos, mm -hmm. I sat down and said, God, if this is not where you want us to stay, tell me. And I may walk away here by, I wouldn't be alone, I, I, I have my wife and my three kids. But I will walk away from this church in a heartbeat because I, I don't want to be where you were. And the Lord said, build it right there. I've given you the community. <laughs> Big difference when you're trying to make something happen and God's not in it. And you'll spend a lifetime trying to make something happen, trying to get in a position or trying to get a title that God said, I never assigned it to you. You were so busy trying to be what other people wanted you to be. <laughs> to where you miss God. Lord, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get through this here today. But they were in a place called Psycho. But Jesus said, Jesus said, now, now I'm going there anyway. With all that's going on, I'm going there anyway. I'm going there be, because somebody has something to drop off. As a matter of fact, this woman came to the well, but she came alone. Now, if you know anything about your Bible and no history, it wasn't even common for women to come alone. They came together. Something happened. It was customary for them to come in in groups That's right. uh -huh. and to come at a certain time, but she came alone and came at a very unusual time. Yes, she did. 
and her situation had reached a point where she couldn't talk to family about how she was feeling. Yes. Oh Never reached a point where I just feel like I can't talk to anybody. Oh, bless his name. I get calls all the time from, from pastors that I've preached for, many of them right with their own organization, who, who call me and they just want to talk. Because they're frustrated. Just want to talk. I had a speaker yesterday. Uh, what was his name again? Irvin Fry. Irvin Fry used to play for the Philadelphia Eagles years ago. He was our speaker for our men's conference on, on yesterday. And he sat down to have breakfast. And he, he said, Bishop, he said, he said, I like your spirit. I said, well, I appreciate it, man. He said, you have a heart for pastors, don't you? Hmm. I almost, I almost, I almost, I almost spit my breakfast out. <laughs> he said, have you thought about having conferences? I said, well, I'm having one no November 30th, December 1st. He said, I can sense that you have a heart for pastors, that you recognize that this is not just a whim. Uh -huh. Sometimes there's some people you can't talk to. Uh -huh. And some folk have gotten themselves in situations talking to folk who can't help you. As a matter of fact, have you ever talked to somebody and they, and by the time they finished, you felt worse? Yes. <laughs> you went with a with a financial need, and when you left, you you ended up loaning them money. <laughs> People that you cannot. But this woman, she came at an unusual time. Her situation had reached the point where, where, where she couldn't talk to, where she couldn't talk to anybody. She couldn't talk to family about how she was feeling. She felt like she couldn't talk to any other women. So she came alone. Listen, expecting to be alone. But she came prepared to get something because the Bible says she brought her water pot. Lord, that just went right over your head. She, she came to get something. Because the Bible says she came with her pot. And Jesus starts the conversation with a request. He said, give me something to drink. Boy, girlfriend got upset. We don't even talk to each other. You know we ain't got nothing in common. Ponytail was swinging in the back. <laughs> and just got the nails. It was a modern day one. Just, <laughs> just got a nail coming in. <laughs> Woo. He said, give me to drink. She wanted to know, why are you even talking to me? She begins to talk about the relationship or the lack of relationship that, that the Samaritans have with the Jews. And Jesus basically wanted to say, I didn't ask you that. Was a drink. I'm parched. I'm, I'm a thirsty. All I asked for was a drink. That's all. You got the bucket. All I want is a drink. Well, she gets a bit. 